no one would have believed there was a time when men would go down with the ship. And I thought, how sad, how sad that we live in a culture where masculinity is attacked. How sad we live in a culture that we would even question that a man would be courageous and exemplify courage and fortitude and self-sacrifice for the sake of his beloved. Oh. Welcome to another episode of The Real Catholic Man. My name is Ryan, and I'm so excited to finally be back. We are in a new warehouse. We finally got a podcast studio to record some of our content. If you've been following us over the past few episodes, again, thank you so much. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share it with your friends so that we can continue to bring awesome content to you. Now, if you don't know, my name is Ryan. I've been married for about 10 years. I have three kids, and I'm the new president and CEO of the Discount Catholic Store and the Catholic Store. So I really am blessed to be in this position to lead an awesome company so that we can continue to bring great gifts to your homes. Before I became president, I spent 12 years in ministry, primarily working with young people, high school students and college age students. Towards the end of my ministry career, I also was working with engaged couples. So I spent about 12 years talking about really one topic that kind of seems unavoidable whenever you're talking to young people. And that's the topic of dating. So today's episode, I want to talk to you a little bit about dating. And if you're in the single state, uh, maybe share some practical tips on how to up your game so that you can possibly find your vocation in marriage. And I want to preface by saying this, I am no expert in dating. However, I am married, which means that another human being, my beautiful wife, took a chance on me and pledged her life to me until death do us apart. First off, shout out to my wife. And two, it is only by the grace of God someone would ever want to marry me. One of the things that marriage has taught me is this beautiful reality of self-gift and the practical ways we can continue to be self-gift to one another. So today I want to give some practical practical tips on how to be self gift to one another. I want to start off by talking about my top five favorite movies. Some of them are a little bit extreme. Don't judge me. These are just movies that I like. The first movie is Gone Baby Gone. The second movie is A Bronx Tale. The third movie is A Man on Fire. The fourth movie is American History X. And of course, the fifth movie that I'm not ashamed to admit is Titanic. I absolutely love the Titanic movie. In fact, I remember when I went to Missouri and they have a Titanic museum in Branson. I remember walking through that and I almost like literally died because of how amazing it was. And all my like childhood memories are flooding in at this very moment. But I love the Titanic. But I remember doing some research, my manly research on the movie and what it took to create that awesome movie. I remember reading this very interesting article about how there's a few inaccuracies of the film, of course, but one of the major inaccuracies is this idea that men are jumping off the ship deserting their wives or going on to the lifeboats. And the reason why that's inaccurate, it was the moral code of the time that men would simply go down with the ship, sacrifice themselves for the sake of their wives and children. Knowing the moral code of the time, they asked the producer of the Titanic, why did you not include that? And he said, well, if we would have kept that, no one would have believed it. No one would have believed there was a time when men would go down with the ship. And I thought, how sad, how sad that we live in a culture where masculinity is attacked. How sad we live in a culture that we would even question that a man would be courageous and exemplify courage and fortitude and self-sacrifice for the sake of his beloved. I want to start off by saying, how do we reinvigorate this love for one ourselves, but also love for the women in our lives? First off, the women in our lives, our female friends in our lives, they are first and foremost, a daughter of God before anything else. She was made in his image and likeness, which means that God literally died for her. She doesn't get her worth from anything else. She doesn't get her worth from her career, her social media likes. She doesn't get her worth from any of that. She gets her worth completely and utterly and freely from God. And because she's a daughter of God, she is beautiful inside and out. St. Peter says this. He says, your adornment should not be an external one, braiding the hair, wearing gold jewelry, or dressing in fine clothes, but rather the hidden character of the heart expressed in the beauty of a gentle and calm disposition, which is precious in the sight of God. So the first thing is I want to encourage you men, look at all the female friends you have around you, or maybe you're dating someone, or maybe you're engaged. And first, be convinced that she is beautiful and that she belongs first and foremost to God. Number two is that she was created to be a bride. She was made for communion with a man. She was made to receive someone. 
The best image that comes to mind is when my wife walked down the aisle when we got married and my father-in-law walked with her down the aisle and then he gave her daughter away to me, this image of receptivity. So she was a bride and that act of giving away symbolizes a deeper act, which is she is meant to be received. So men, look at the females around your life and understand that she was meant to be received, not taken, not possessed, but received. And so therefore it demands an openness on your part. The third thing is that she was created to be a mother. Every woman is called to be a mother. Now, of course, not every woman is called to be a physical mother, but every woman is called to be a spiritual mother. John Paul II in his encyclical on the dignity and vocation of women said, every woman is called to spiritual motherhood. And it means nurturing the emotional, moral, cultural, and spiritual life of others. When you understand that the ladies in your life belong to God, they've been made to be a bride, and they've been called to motherhood, it should remind us that they've been created with dignity and that we have to treat them with that. And I really do believe that it's not until we understand that, then we're able to really win her over. And by win her over, I mean really do the things that uphold her dignity and ultimately get married. <laughs> Okay, so for us men, what does that mean? Well, it means that when you and I were baptized, we were meant to take on the whole life and mission of Christ as our own. And what was his life? What was his whole mission? Well, he was a priest, prophet, and king. And what is a prophet? A prophet is one who speaks on behalf of God, whether it's popular or not. A king leads others to God and helps others find their identity in Christ. But what I'd like to briefly touch upon today is the priestly character of Christ. The dignity of the man is rooted in this priestly character. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he gave himself totally away and completely away. He held nothing back and through this self-gift, he sanctified and redeemed the world. Brothers, we are also called to participate in the same mission, to imitate Jesus, priestly act upon the cross by offering our whole self to the other. Our life is one sacrificial offering. Bishop Olmsted, in his awesome exhortation into the breach, he said, those who arrive at the judgment seat of God after this life without the scars of a sacrificing husband will hold their manhood cheap whilst any speak who fought with us. Why does all of this matter? Because women are attracted to men who uphold their dignity and practice self-sacrificial love. That means that we have to be intentional. Nothing communicates self-sacrificial love like intentionality. This is why when we say things like hold the door open for a woman, this is what it means by offer her a seat, offer to carry something heavy for her, walk on the other side closer to the traffic, offer your umbrella, pay attention to how you dress and how you smell, be vigilant about your language. Don't pry into her private life. Why? Because it upholds her dignity. It says that we care about her. So I'm going to give you some practical tips on how to prepare ourselves to date with intentionality as a man. Okay, so number one, begin with the season of friendship. Be friends. The best of lovers are the best of friends. So do the things that friends do. Go walk around the park go for a run, go for a nice hike, do the things that friends do, take interest in each other's things because the best lovers are the best of friends. Friendship is really the foundation to an awesome relationship. You know, I think about, you know, whenever you're at the park, walking in the park and you see an elderly married couple and they're kind of just sitting there silence with each other, holding hands and they're not even saying anything, but they've been married for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. You may be asked, well, what do they have? What's so special about the relationship? What's special is friendship. They've built their love on friendship. So number one, begin with the season of friendship. Learn how to will each other's good. Number two, make your commitment clear. I used to say this, define the relationship. DTR, women love men who are clear and who initiate. So what does this mean practically speaking? Let's say you ask a woman out on a date, pick the restaurant. Don't ask her, well, what do you want to eat? Whatever you want to eat, choose the restaurant. Say, listen, you know, I have 20 bucks in my pocket. We could only go to Chipotle today. Go to Chipotle, but you choose the restaurant. So be clear, be decisive and initiate. Don't be afraid to be creative about 
about your date ideas. You don't always have to go to a restaurant. You don't always have to go to the movies, but you can do something fun. You can learn about a piece of art. So you can go visit the local museum, go to a car show, go to a baseball game, do something fun and out of the ordinary. Be specific. Now, I'm not trying to pick on the ladies here, but one of the mistakes that women can sometimes make, they can make the mistake that we know what they are thinking. Don't assume that we know what you're thinking. We actually don't know what you're thinking. And men, because you know that, it's important for us to be specific. Lady friend, exactly what are you asking from me? What are you asking for? I can't read your mind. You know, I think about sometimes when my wife is having a bad day, I can sense it now because we've been married for 10 years, but sometimes she has to remind me, Ryan, I need you to go to Trader Joe's and get chocolate chip mint ice cream, right? Just for me, or go to the flower section, pick these tulips or pick these roses or pick something very specific. She has to do that. I don't know what she's thinking. So she has to be very clear with me at times. Okay, the next one is be intentional about how you spend time with her. You know, this is something that I saw a lot working with college students and working with young people, right? They would invite maybe the girl over to the dorm, to a lounge, and the guy is just kind of playing video games while the girl is just sitting there on her phone and there's no exchange going on. That's not friendship. Now, is it okay if you guys have a fun video game night where you guys could both do Mario Kart or Super Smash Brothers and you guys both play together and have fun? Yeah, that's one thing. What I'm talking about is you sitting down, locked into your video game and completely ignoring her. There's nothing attractive about that. Next step, guard your heart, but not too much. What do I mean by that? Listen, love hurts. Love is the cross. Love is going to demand a painful sting at times. And those of you guys who are married and understand this, that half the battle of marriage is kind of learning how to get over ourselves. At the same time, love demands vulnerability. Dig deep and be vulnerable with the person we love. If you're in the dating scene, what I encourage you to do is to guard your heart, but not too much. What do I mean by that? You don't have to lay your entire heart before the girl you are dating or interested in on the first date or the second date or the third date. Why? You're building your relationship on a friendship and vulnerability takes time. What I also mean by guard your heart is that if you are Catholic and you're listening to this podcast, we don't subscribe to this love is a fuzzy emotional thing. Now it is part of the emotions, but it's not only the emotions. We subscribe to this reality that love leads to the cross and love demands sacrifice, which means that Whenever we put a heart on the line, it is bound to be broken or disappointed in some way, shape, or form. So I want you to guard your heart, to be patient with what you share with the girl that you are seeing or are interested in. Learn and practice your faith. If you are single right now, you're in the dating scene and you're not married, I really want to encourage you to continue to strive for holiness. Double down on the things that increase your love for God, love for the church, and self-knowledge. Purchase a catechism, study it. Read the lives of the saints. Even if it's only five minutes a day, I encourage you just to pick up a book and read and be formed by the saints. Maybe pray the rosary and go to confession frequently. The more we allow the Lord to form our minds and our hearts as men, the more we're able to give to our future beloved. Next one is be pure, be radical in fighting temptations. Listen, if you try to show up to fight the evil one, you're going to lose. The fact of the matter is we have to be extreme in our measures of fighting temptations. What I mean by extreme is we have to understand that we have to we have to take custody of our eyes. We have to possess ourselves because temptation is lurking all around us. You know, when our Lord says, if it causes you to sin, pluck your eye out. Now, do I mean literally pluck your eye out? No, that's not what I mean. But maybe practically speaking, if your phone is a source of temptation, or maybe Instagram or TikTok or social media, if it is a source of temptation, get rid of it or put extreme measures on it. Allow yourself to only spend an hour a day in front of the screens. Or if eating is a source of temptation, it kind of just nurtures and you feed onto just eating and overeating. Maybe start practicing two meals a day, maybe just digesting a plate that's going to make you full so you don't overeat. Or alcohol. If alcohol is a weakness of yours, get rid of it. It's not worth it, especially right now as you prepare for your beloved, you have an opportunity to really dig deep and build up the masculine virtues of discipline in your life. The last thing I want to share, and this is something that I know it's really hard to do, but find other men in the battle with you. No one can teach you how to be a man like another man. I can't express this enough and share this enough with you that if you know of a man who's masculine, pursuing virtue, eager to grow in holiness, is serious about his life, then I encourage you to try to befriend him. Because we can't walk this battle alone. I have found that the men in my
my life have really strengthened me and really held me accountable to be the man that I am called to be. So I just want to share some practical tips with you. If you agree, if you disagree, feel free to comment below, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to visit us at thecatholicstore.com or discountcatholicstore.com. God bless.